Hello, everybody. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce. I am here with my friend Cindy yet again from Sacred Garden Yoga here in the greater Atlanta area. She's my real life friend. I actually knew Cindy long in person long before YouTube ever was a thing in either of our lives. So how are you doing today, Cindy? I'm doing good. How about you? Living the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good for you. I'm so happy and excited for you. Oh, well, okay. I had to go sit and listen to some Ram Dass lectures this morning just to like, mm -hmm. you know, when before YouTube, when my focus was primarily teaching yoga all day, it, it was easy because as you know, as a teacher, I've laughed with Catherine. We have this saying in the yoga world. I think that the teacher often teaches what the teacher needs to learn. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, when you're doing that all day, you're kind of lecturing yourself and like checking yourself. But then when you pick up a new, a new uh, craft or a new job, sometimes that gets a little uh, kiltered. And so I spent this morning uh, before I started working, listening to a lot of Ram Dass lectures again. You know, that man, he checked out right before the shit show really started. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. He's, but he set us up, though. I think he provided so much wisdom and knowledge and the insight that will forever be used. I love Ram Dass. Me too. He was one of the most, um, for those who don't know Ram Dass, I'll put some links down in the description box below for some of his YouTube stuff. But he, uh, he, he passed away in December of 2019. He was very old when he passed away. So nothing nefarious. It was just his time. Um, literally a few months before the whole world went um, helter kelter. But you know, it's like, you're right. I think he totally set, um, I shared something on my Twitter this morning from the channel's Twitter that his teaching is what has allowed me. And I think many other people to be alive now in this moment, in this timeline of, you know, things really getting complicated and being able to find that silence within, um, you know, one of the magical parts of the yoga practice is, uh, being able to stand up for what you believe in, but also knowing that you have to accept whatever happens that there has mm -hmm. to be an acceptance because you know, it, there is a dharmic there. There is kind of that, that piece of letting go sometimes, but anyway, yeah. Ram Dass is awesome guys. Uh, there's some great documentaries that he has done. He was, his birth name was Richard Alpert. He has a very, very interesting life story. He was definitely sent here with a very purposeful mission um, to help us humans uh, evolve into the spiritual, forceful, spiritual beings that we truly are. So, um, so anyway, guys, we're going to talk about the moon. But before we're going to talk about the moon, because this has come up so much, I think I think we've talked about it before. But Cindy isn't just you know a yoga shala owner; she's also quite uh, magical herself, and she is also a healer. And um, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and remind you guys to go over to Sacred Garden and Yoga's YouTube page and subscribe because she has a lot of conversation, a lot of you. If you like these kind of spiritual talks, um, she has a lot of talks on that. And she also has some practices up here, too. And so if, if you're new to the Asana world and you want to start looking at some physical practice, you know, Cindy's an incredible teacher. So you can always go and check out her practices, too. I'm going to click over to Sacred Garden's website because we were talking, Cindy, and I know I've done If My computer's being very slow today, guys, so I hope it pulls up. I don't know what's going on in the air, but um, if it doesn't pull up right away, I'll put a link down in the description box below. Um, but Cindy also does spiritual healing healing. And I've done a session with Cindy as well. And um, you were telling me, Cindy, that you can even cut like demonic attachments too, right? Yeah, that was actually one of the first things I learned how to do, which is kind of crazy in my world. Even before I learned how to be a yoga teacher, even before I learned how to be a Reiki, you know, like getting into Reiki or the shamanic stuff that, um, that I learned as well. Uh, my very first teacher, he did, that's what he did. He did spirit release and like, which included like demonic release work, which when I think about it now, I mean, I learned that in my mid twenties and now um, I'm much better at it now <laughs> than I was back then. But I just found it interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine about this the other day, how that was so anchored into my own practice from the very from the very, very beginning, as if this was, you know, I, I really do feel it. This is like just when you like, like each one of us has our own like particular gifts and talents and, and higher callings. 
and that of um, the, like the shadow work stuff that we right. talked so much about, which within the realm of that also takes you into uh, that aspect of the shadow when you're working with someone, when they actually have attracted like entities, whether they're earthbound entities or whether they're, you know, uh, nefarious and malicious entities like mnemonics or curses or yeah. anything like that, that, um, that was, um, that was anchored into my training from, from the get go. That's so, amazing. yeah. And I never really realized the, the importance of that until I was thinking about it. I'm, I'm talking about just, just a few months ago. I was like, oh, wow. You know, that's like one of the first things, usually that's something someone learns later. Right. But I mean, right. this was something that was very initially through all my different initiations. It was like anchored in really early on, on the, just, just the belief and the idea that they exist. Yeah. So that was introduced to me very, you know, very early on that there are beings and, um, and entities that come from more of the nefarious and the malicious, uh, the malicious place. And, you know, all this about, you know, curses and that they're, you know, they're real and that they, they really do exist. And one of the, um, the last videos I made, uh, we're talking about the false light Mm -hmm. And the some of these uh, more malicious, even demonic beings, they even know how to immolate. They can mimic and immolate um, a light. Yeah, to trick That's you, like to trick you and to make you thinking that it's of the higher light. But it'll trick you. Like when uh, it happened, it, it was a, a session that I did maybe a year, a couple of years back, when I really first started to 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 see it more how um how they can actually mimic light but yeah. it's not like it's not the you know i don't know if you and i've talked about this before but it's not like the highest vibration of light but they can go in and and mimic their tricksters yeah so anyways um just the you know that the, the stuff it you know i the way i've always seen it and experienced it it's it's real I mean, it's, it's, and I know you've had your own experience yeah. with that as well. Oh, I'm like a magnet. It. I mean, I've been through hell and back uh -huh. these last like three months, but literally I've been a magnet my whole life for, um, it's gotten physical with me. Um, entities get physical with me. Um, and so, and I, I, from what I understand, but I see it like for me, every opportunity, every time I've gotten attacked, it's like an opportunity for me to understand myself more and like why, why is it, why am I, why is this coming in? Mm -hmm. And you're right because there is, you know, I talk a lot on, on this channel about the light within us, the spark within us. And that's that fractal of God. It's that fractal mm -hmm. of source that we all carry. Um, you know, in the Bible, even it says Genesis one, three, God said, let there be light that um, the original Hebrew word for that meant divine spark. Um, that there was a divine spark that's within all of us. And you can see that light behind people, behind their eyes. You know, it's like for people who've seen somebody in life and then seen them, uh, you know, in their body form after they've passed away, it looks like a totally different person because the soul, the spark is gone. And a lot of time, these entities will want to feed off of that as well because they can't create. If you get into the Apocryphon, missing books of the Bible, the Apocryphon, they talk about this, that the darkness, and the Law of One talks about this as well. The darkness can't create anything only the light can so that means that entities of the darkness um and the polarization of dark have to then take and invert from what was created by the light which means that all of these symbols that we see and we've talked about this uh cindy off camera all of these symbols we see in our world that we have now been have now have been labeled as bad we're at one point good and we're at one point created by beings of light and but they just got inverted and screwed up by by the darkness but of course we can purify i mean even the pyramids i mean i have so many pyramids and you know they've obviously you know because it was created by by the light but yes absolutely i mean you see i learned so much i mean this year i even though i've been attacked a lot my whole life i had no idea that people could actually use your natal chart to mimic your to actually like feed off of your life force it's like spiritual identity theft until it happened to me 
And until all of a sudden, like the, I started having the side effects of my natal chart being used. And then I figured out who was doing it. And then I was able to, to cut it off and seal it. I learned that I could seal that, but yeah, this mm -hmm. stuff happens. And it's such a unique opportunity when it does happen to you, because you do get to see a side of the world that not many people get to see, but it's very real. This is very real. I mean, the more mm -hmm. you see it, the more you realize true blood wasn't just a fictional story. Like this stuff, this shit's real, you know? Um, and so we were talking off camera, Cindy, because, you know, we've, I've talked a lot about consent on my channel and all this kind of stuff that no one's going to, you know, beyond consent, if you decide you have a healing session that you want to do, Cindy as the conduit or anybody that you're working with can only do so much because you're the one that has to actually show up and be involved in removing this stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the, I mean, that was the way I learned it even my, in my own training. Now, like I can come to you as, as someone to help you and I can come to you with my, and as I was telling you, I have like an army of celestial beings who actually do this kind of work, you know, just through all the initiations and everything that uh, as a healer you go through, depending on what particular kind of work that you're going in. And, you know, I can come in with uh, just what I've learned and I can come in with my my army <laughs> and uh, we can help you. We can guide you. But the it's it's not me doing the work and it's not I mean, in, the, in, in the celestial, you know, the spirit guides, my spirit guides and even the spirit guides of the of the uh, of the person who's receiving the work. We can support you. We can show you. We can, um, you know, open you up to the information. But it's up to you to actually banish it or to push it off or to cut the cords or, or to realize, like you said, how, um, why did I attract this in the first place? Where did the weakness come from within me? You're talking about sealing the mm -hmm. best way because because you were talking about sealing the Kashuk records be before that. And, uh, and, and I don't know if this is the same thing as what you're talking about, but if you want to, to keep yourself more so that you don't, don't attract that stuff, you just got to make yourself bigger. Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily, um, I mean, the, there's all sorts of protection things that you can put on you, but the more internal work that you do, the more that you heal yourself, your aura will automatically seal itself. Things yeah. can't come in if you've got less weaknesses going on within your, within your field, within your, your auric field and that, you know, everything that you, that you feel emotionally, um, if you're holding on to a lot of anger, if you're holding on to a lot of sadness, that's um, that you're just holding on to it, you know, for whatever reason, you know, all that creates a, a diminishing effect to, to your field, which then makes you more, more juicier looking, more yeah. uh, healing to to beings who can take advantage of that. Absolutely. And so, if you want to just um, keep yourself more, so that so that you don't attract that, you just have to make yourself super duper, like do your work and make yourself bright and and increase your, um, you know, uh, or what I'm saying, just magnify magnify your light and that in it, in itself is enough to act as a protective barrier too you so. know it's so interesting you say that too because that's kind of the experience i had um when uh, I, and i've said this on my channel many times at the at the height of the spiritual attacks when i couldn't eat and i think you remember that cindy back in december i got really skinny um i think you even mentioned something one day at the shala i just couldn't eat every time i go to eat my, my jaw would lock uh, i was waking up with bloody mouths every morning bruises all sorts of stuff and one of my another friend who deals with this a lot uh was the one that really started to i had gotten emails too informing me that this person had done this to many other people before and then my friend who um who does this for uh, on the side is familiar with, with this type of um, ma black magic basically. And so she was able to help me, but there was one night in December, I, I or morning, actually early morning, I was sitting on the bathroom floor, blood coming out of my mouth, couldn't eat skin and bones. And I was, um, and I was begging it to stop. And I was asking God, I was like, why is this happening? I want this to stop now. I don't consent. And God said to me, he said, I'm not, um, I'm letting this happen because you're strong enough to handle this. This needs to be exposed. Do not ne never interrupt an enemy when they're in the process of hanging themselves. And I'm not going to let you die. 
And the minute mm-hmm. he said, I'm not going to let you die. And all that came before I realized that there was information there for me. And so it, it took me looking at my own Akashic records and my own natal chart to understand deeper significance of what it is they were actually after that has to do with my own spirit and learning that gave mm-hmm. me the power to go, Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. You're not going to take this. You're not exactly. going to take this. Yeah. So it was like a learning experience from you and you knew, okay, yeah, this is, yeah. Cause like you said before, it's like, you didn't even know that that even existed or that such a thing could, could even happen. But through the experience, you learned that, yeah, that, that it was a possibility, you know, a way in for somebody. And then through you realizing it, that just that hell no, that empowering, that empowering sense of I'm not going to let this happen to me anymore, that in itself will project a certain amount of of light that will um, push it back. Push yeah. It back. Uh-huh. Well, even uh, even talking about it on my channel and, and talking about other channels, like to show people that this does happen, this is real. And they do. And and sometimes, you know, the darkness will also that that fear, that depression, whatever it is, it plays on that because it knows the darkness knows that you're actually more powerful than it is. It's like a bully. It's like a bully that beats up a kid because he doesn't want that kid to know that that kid can stand up to the bully. And so that's when I started talking more about it, because to validate other people and to also say, listen, it's like the it's like the Wizard of Oz. And she's clicking her shoes at the end. You've always had the power. You've always mm-hmm. had that power. And I kept thinking of, because I think here in, in the, the West, especially in America, we, and maybe it's just human nature in general, we always want to, when we're doing spiritual work, or when we start doing spiritual work, we always have this, this uh, longing to bypass the hard stuff. We want to kind of like just go around it to get to the good stuff. And I've been talking a lot about the story of Hanuman from the Ramayana. And I've been briefly talking about it, about, you know, Sita gets stolen by Ravana, who's the 10 headed demon. And and Hanuman has to find Sita and bring, bring uh, Sita back to Ram. This, that Sita is a soul. Ram's God. Hanuman is our courage. But there's a part I haven't really focused on. And that is the battle that Hanuman has with Ravana. Now, Ravana in the Bhagavad Gita, or in the, excuse me, the Ramayana, he is, again, he's the 10 headed demon that can't be slain. Cut one head off and another one grows back, back up. It's like, in, in the story, it's, that's like our ego, right? But the thing about it is when Hanuman jumps all the way to, um, to Sri Lanka to find Sita, first he finds her. He sees where she is hidden in the forest. And most people would be like, oh, we'll just get her and sneak off and take her back to, to Ram. But that's not what Hanuman does. He finds Sita. He sees where she, he is. She is. And then he turns around and goes to battle Ravana. He knows he has to actually battle Ravana instead of just mm-hmm. kidnapping her and taking her back to Ram. And I thought, how apropos is that for our work in spirituality? To notice where, where that is, but then also turning around and going back and saying, no, I have to go. It's like Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. I have to go through this battle. I have to. Mm-hmm. I have to. Because if I don't, I love that. it's just going to keep coming back. Like Rob and I would just keep coming back and still in Sita until it's defeated once and for all. And so you have to go through that. But that doesn't mean, again, that you have to go through it alone. Even though you are the primary person in battle when you're going through your own healing, you have people like Cindy to help you. You have people like Shanti in South Africa to help you. Mary up in Wisconsin to help you. Like you have people that are trained that can help you. And, and you've been through, I'm sure you've been through your, you have your, fair share of stories of stuff you've seen happen and dealt with, haven't you, Cindy? There's really nothing that shocks you anymore, right? Yeah. Um, well, there's always some. There's like, well, I mean, I learned something, too, from every different kind of entity. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you learn how um, certain ones require certain timing versus, like, there's a good time versus there's a bad time. You learn, um, I don't know, you just learn how many different kind of like, you know, the, the, what curses feel like you learn about like the implants and, yep. you know, attachments and all sorts of things that, you know, it, like if you're not in it, you'd be like, what, what, what the heck? There's all that stuff that's going on. And, it, and it's not to, to scare anyone or to make someone feel like, oh my gosh, I just have to now hide in my bed all the time and I can't get, cause you know, at any point I can get attacked and cause it's not that easy. 
No. It's not that easy for someone to, to, to penetrate you if you have some kind of, you know, strength to you. But it's just simply good to, to be aware that it can certainly happen. And if you've been suffering for something for a long, long period of time and, you know, you've seen all the doctors, because usually by the time someone comes and sees me, <laughs> they've seen all the doctors, they've seen the therapist. You know, they've gotten all and, and then it's just like nothing, nothing is helping. And at some point, you just have to open yourself to the possibility that that these things, you know, do happen and that they exist, whether you want to believe it or not, it doesn't matter. It's still, yeah. you know, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. But that's one thing I love about the Hindu faith anyway, is, is they see like the demons as demonstrators. So the hard stuff is teaching you. You know, and, and we know in the Western world, we say what, what, what the devil will use for bad, God will use for good. You know, it's kind of like that big plot twist, like, haha, ha, plot twist. You thought you were going to take that the, the darkness was going to take you out. No, the light used it to teach you who you really are. You know, it's mm -hmm. like um, um, our friend Shanti in South Africa. I love she says, we came to earth to learn what we are not. To learn mm -hmm. what we are not. We are not the darkness. Yeah, we know what we are. Yeah. Now, what are we not? I mean, we came from the oneness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the point of just experience more and more and more and more oneness? Yeah. <laughs> when we already know that. It's like we already know that. Yeah. So it's like doing kindergarten over and over and over again. You already know you're interested. Move on. Let's experience something that's more diverse. Yeah. You know, something that is more, you know, with different flavors. Let's experience the bitter, let's experience the salty, the sour, you know, all the different flavors that can come from, from, you know, just having a full life human experience. Yeah. 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 And spiritual warfare is pretty much a part of it. Um, so, but is it true? I mean, as God said, like you're strong enough to handle it. I don't think that your guides and your angels or whatever you believe in would ever allow you to go through something that unless it was in your soul contract unless you agree to it that would literally mm -hmm. take you out so it's always right. there to better you and to make you wonder and even if it does take you out the next life you have more information to carry in with your next soul contract so um so cindy if people want to contact you for a consultation or for they can just go to the sacred garden website correct Absolutely. Yeah, they can go on the website. They can send me an email if they have something more. Because, the, you know, the, the couple of services that are on the website and, and on the Cindyola website, um, they are like uh, light body activations or um, soul energy type work, like uh, soul alchemy sessions, which is more the shadow work. But if you have something that you're battling, like attachments and things like that, it's probably a good idea just to, you know, shoot me over a message or an email and tell me what's going on. And so, um, yeah. I guess you can email right here by clicking here. I'll also put your email address down in the description box too, Cindy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that should do it. Mm -hmm. Which, um, it's yeah, info at sacredgardenyoga.com, correct? Oh, it's gonna yes, info at sacredgardenyoga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so, um, so, so yeah, I'll, I'll put that down in the description box too, guys. Um, if that's something you want to talk to us, can you do that over zoom with people, Cindy? Mm -hmm. I can. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. And can you see that? Like if someone emails you and says, I don't know if I have an attachment, but I might have an attachment. Can you actually see that on people when you, if they give you consent to like look in their energy field, if they're actually, consent, I can usually feel into it. I'm more of a feeler. Yeah. Cool. And like I'm more of a feeler and a knower and then the seer comes more in like through the mind's eye but I'm I'm definitely more of like a like a like a feeler it just depends yeah. on what your what your clears are like what your what your strengths are how your how the experiences come through you so yeah, yeah. but I usually uh, get feeling that I get knowing like I'll just get hit with information like it'll just download I get downloads yeah. So yeah. 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 I love that word downloads. I'm gonna get more downloads too. That's why yeah. I've got my telepathy is picked up. Like all these other different things have started picking up with me, have been activating from this, from this experience. Which well, again, probably like it is an initiation for you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think the entities that were doing it wanted to wanted it to be an initiation. I think they literally wanted yeah. to steal my identity, spiritual identity, but 
Oh, well. But it acted as the higher purpose of it. That's what it did. It acted as an initiation for you. Yeah. And so, so a lot yeah. of my, because it's almost like that, that saying, like, you don't know how strong you are until you have to be. And so mm-hmm. since this became such a physical, um, because this, the spiritual attack manifested so physically, I had to start tapping into to different things. And I had to start, like, I always knew that there were abilities there, but I never really played with them. I never really messed with them as much as I probably could have. And it forced me, it forced me into that, um, that knowing and being confident in my gut and being confident in that, that spidey sense. And, you know, I think that's hard for women because we're coming out of a time. I mean, we've talked about the divine feminine a lot, Cindy, you're the, you're the person that y'all, cause I've been reading this Magdalene book on the series on the show, Cindy, Cindy's the one that recommended this book to me guys that we've been reading on this. Talking about like entity release, Magdalene, the, 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 the Isis lineage and the Magdalene, Magdalene lineage, and, uh, as far as some of their, what their priestess power is, it is that. Yeah. Like when I feel, I mean, a lot of times when I'm going to like go in and there's going to be an entity or it's going to feel demonic or something, it's the high priestess that comes through. It is the high priestess of, it is mother Mary. It's Mary Magdalene. Remember we talked about that dragon that one time that, that came in. It, yeah. I mean, the Magdalene order is an order that demolishes demons and they will come in. I mean, cause I can feel, I feel them like it's, you know, the, the, it's the, it's the ISIS lineage, right? It's the Magdalene that they, it comes in. So this yes. is what we're going to be reading next. And um, I know it's going to ruffle some feathers, but it was recommended. And apparently in this book, it talks about how Matt, Mary Magdalene was the person who activated Yahshua or Jesus, as we know him, Yahshua, she activated him. She was the one who activated him, which I know people are going to be like, <gasps> but no, she did. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. And it's so funny you say that, Cindy, because I know I'm, I know through this experience, I know I'm part of the Magdalene line. That's mm-hmm. how the, that's what was kind of revealed to me through this, through the Akashic records is I'm, I'm actually part of the Magdalene line, the order of the blue rose. And so when you talk about the demonic, it's spiritual warfare. And that's when I was like, oh, Okay okay, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> no, and what I feel them come in, it's like I can feel when there is a sense of when it's time for them to do their work and, and they can enjoy it. I mean, they, they, they like it. You know, they, I can see them like coming in and they're red, red and gold, and they're ready. And it's like, you know, no one's going to mess with us. And there is no demon that we can, we can't, we're a laughing case. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Well, the exactly. story, you know, there's a story in the Bible of the seven demons that Jesus exercised off of the Magdalene. And that's not a true story. The real story is that she was about to be, and I have to spell this out guys, gang R A P E deed for her golden light, for the fact that she had that golden essence. And so seven men were going to try to take that from her through the act of sex through forced sex. And I was like, that makes way more sense. That makes way more sense than the story they told Mm -hmm. us in vacation Bible school, because she was so freaking powerful. She was the other half of the Christ. She was the divine feminine. She activated Yahshua. Oh yeah. And even the story of, um, white Buffalo woman, Mm -hmm. you read her story and her, her, um, even in the way, you know, they, they tell it in, in just her, like, even if you Google it is uh, uh, when she came down, she was met by two, two men, like two indigenous men. And one of the men had uh, malicious intentions, same thing, like same kind of thing. They wanted to do that kind of thing to her. And the, the other man had very pure intentions and she could sense it. She could read it. And the man who had the, the, the malintent, she pretty much dissolved him down into the earth. It was like she did her own demonic. It's like, no, that, that cannot happen and that cannot exist. And I'm not anything about that. Yeah. And, you know, that in, in, it was the, um, the one, the, the wise man. Or, you know, the one that understood her energy because her light was so bright, you know, 
that took her message back to, to, to the people, you know, to the people of the land too. And then, you know, she came over and did her thing, but, but, you know, similar kind of story that there was uh, someone, you know, a man who was planning on doing some harmful things. Mm-hmm. They saw her light and then she was like, Mm-mm. not going not today, buddy. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're messing with the wrong woman in this point. Yeah, exactly. Not, because that's what I mean. You think about like the Magdalene, like her story got completely just screwed up. You know, like we 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 know she was never a prostitute. Nothing against sex workers, but that wasn't her story. Um, she was actually not from a town called Magdala. That was another lie they've told us. Magdalene means the tower. She was the tower moment. She was the the clip, the plot twist. And I feel like what's happening now as we enter into this age of Aquarius is that Magdalene is coming back in the sense of the divine feminine finding her power again to be like, not today, buddy. Like, you know, and you look at the idea, because even this, you know, this is, I know people are going to have issues, but that's okay. We're here to learn on this channel where it's the alchemy, alchemies of Horus and the sex magic of Isis, the Mag- Magdalene manuscript. There is, like, there is a sex magic. There is, um, a positive side where you think about kundalini like all this stuff can start to, to to rise but on the flip side there that can be used nefariously it's stealing that power nefariously, nefariously versus growing it um in, in a consensual activation type of relationship i'm trying to be careful what i say on youtube but um yeah. but you know and so you can see how the bad side would want to rape a woman to try to take that you know, even think mm-hmm. about the demonic, the demonic um, entities like the incubus or the succubus. Um, that's very much uh, the nefarious side of that type of, of magic. And um, yeah, and so so it's interesting. Uh, the more I study Magdalene as well, her history and who she really was, she also came, uh, she was actually from Egypt. Her father ruled Egypt at that time, but she was not uh, genetically Egyptian. She was um, Greek. Her father was from the Greek line. Her father came from the Ptolemy line. But her mother, I've been looking into her mother because her mother was completely taken out of the Bible. Like you don't even see any type of whisper of who her mother was. But the more you research it, her mother was actually Nordic. And Nordic, so that's where Magdalene got the blue eyes and the blonde hair, which people often have problems with paintings of her having blue eyes and blonde hair because they want to say, oh, no, she was Middle Eastern. But no, she wasn't. She wasn't. She lived there, but she wasn't. That wasn't her lineage. And then I was reading some of the um, uh, off-worlder platforms, like the Cassiopeians, the Palladians, and they talk about the Nordic, that there's like a Nordic line that runs through that's very magical and very powerful. And I was like, oh, my God this makes so much sense. So she came from the Ptolemy line, which was her father, which was super, that's the Cleopatra line. That's it. That's Cleopatra. Her, her Alex through Alexander Helios, her son, Helios means the sun, right? Alexander, the sun, the golden sun, which is also Arch- Archangel Michael. And she, her mother was of Nordic descent. So this woman was like a walking, like powerhouse. The fact mm-hmm. that she had all these gifts and abilities and she got it. She understood it, but we know that her mother also raised her through the priestesshood of Isis. So yeah, no, she was trained early. Mm-hmm. Very, yeah, and they are trained in the the lineage of Isis. They are trained in sex magic, mm-hmm. but the correct way. Yes, yeah, not, yeah. not the the way that we think of it now, but um, yeah. but the way of yes, awakening Kundalini and the true coming together of the like understanding the the actual sexual coming together of the divine feminine and the divine masculine and how that comes in together to create the, the horus you know the the immaculate child yeah you know that whole thing the G, the jeshua and mary magdalene that's what they were doing i mean they had the, that whole thing mastered that part of the sexual alchemy like and understanding too that the union of the divine male, the, the, the divine female to create the the child, like mm-hmm. the Horus, you know, the the the, the, the new child. And and it's funny, like you, you were talking about planets, that actually represents too like Mercury. Mercury is the union of like spirit and matter, if you want to take it more metaphysical. Like, you know, you got the union of spirit, you got the union of matter and spirit is, you know, often symbolic of the sacred male and matter, the sacred, sacred female, the Shakti. Mm -hmm. And uh, they come together and then they create Mercury, like Mercury and Hermes. You you heard of Hermes Mm -hmm. and Mercury. 
the, it, it's, it's the triad. In other words, it exists in between. Mercury isn't just like spirit or matter. Mercury is spirit and matter come together because he's the divine child of, of the two. So, I mean, anyway, you can just like keep going and going on within that, but that's, you know, thinking, uh, just taking that back to like that, the sexual, the magic, the alchemy, the, the, like the true potency of, of what that, what that means, the way it's been twisted, which is mm -hmm. such a shame, you know, like with, and, and of course, you know, like how sex has been shamed and, and, you know, put within the realm of the, the yucky part of humanity, we should shame that part. Yeah. And then that created the whole fiasco for things like you were talking about, like R-A-P-E-D, because it's mm -hmm. not, it's, it just hasn't, um, it, those are old, old wounds, you know? Yeah. Well, and the it's whole idea of the, you know, the witch trials as well with, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've said on my channel, we've, it's, everything's been so inverted. I mean, if you look back at the Bible, because that's where people are taking this from, the word for sorcery in the Bible was pharmakia. Mm -hmm. not plant medicine not shamanistic healing it was pharmakia so put two and two together people like it's in, been inverted and women were often because women are the divine feminine is the intuitive arts is the you know every even men have a divine feminine with their intuition it's but that was what was shamed that was what was like considered to be like you know satanic or whatever and it's amazing like the true story of these people that lived is so much more fantastic, so much more magical than this, the bullshit we've been fed um, through, you know, controlled organizations. And, um, and the funny thing is researching um, the Magdalene and Yahshua, because we know, we know now from the missing books of the, of the Bible that Mary, uh, Yahshua's uh, mother, had sex with Joseph. And that's how Yahshua was conceived. It's in the missing gospel. They talk about that, that the angel told Joseph to go to Mary. Like that was a polite way of saying like he had sex with his wife, mm -hmm. you know, and that's mm -hmm. that and that's that sex magic again to create the baby. Um, the story we've been told through through the, you know, organized view of those spirit. That's an incubus or a succubus. That's the bad stuff. But anyway, her, the parents. So um, Magdalene's parents and Yashua's parents, they were also practicing this. So these children grew up with parents who taught them this because that's what they were practicing too, you know? So you have this long lineage. And I believe from my research now of trying to figure out the true timeline that this was actually coming from Atlantis. They were carrying this over from, from, because we know that Mary's bloodline, O negative, which is what I am, was the Atlantean bloodline. Whereas Yasha was a B negative, which is the, um, was the new, the new antigens brought into because, after the fall of Atlantis. And so it all goes back to this, this fantastic story of where we come from as, as physical beings on this earth. You know, we know our souls are not, some of our souls are not from, we've talked about this Sunday about star seeds. Star seeds are never fully comfortable on this planet, are they? <laughs> they come in with an existential crisis. They're born, <laughs> we're born with it. Why am I here? <laughs> Abort exactly. my home. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You said something mm -hmm. one day. We were at your shala. We were talking about talking about this stuff. And you go, oh, yeah, you're totally a star seat. Like you can <laughs> tell, like just not comfortable being here. <laughs> like, take, take me, just take me home. <laughs> so uh, but this is a really dense planet to be on, isn't it? It's a lot of density here. But how exciting to be how exciting to be living in a time where we can talk about this, Cindy, on YouTube. I know it's, it's truly is amazing how things have, have definitely shifted mm -hmm. and how we're opening up more to different perspectives. And that's, that's the main thing is opening up the dialogue, opening up your eyes to the different points of view, the different perspectives. And it's okay to talk about this, these things. And yeah. it's not that one person is trying to take away your belief or your, or your ideas, you know, because if you have a belief and, and that belief feeds you and, re and you really like that belief, then so be it. But it's also like we have to hold space for the fact that there's more than, and we talked about this too, there's more than one path, there's more than one belief, and then they will all take you, you know, to the, as long as your your soul is good and you have that higher intention and that you're, you, you really want to elevate and you want to do good, you know, the, the path that you take, it's going to, to take you there. And it doesn't have to be just one. Now, if you find one that you really like, then go for it. But to have conversations to where we can talk about, you know, different ideas and different beliefs without 
feeling like you're going to be persecuted, burned at the stake or thrown the bottom of a well. That was me. I think I've been thrown at the bottom of a well um, a time or two that, um, <laughs> <Ten. Yeah. laughs> that, um, that we can have the conversations now without, without feeling that, you know, that, yeah. and, and whether you want to believe it, I mean, this is where, you know, we're talking about, you have to make your mind up for yourself where, you know, I'm, I am certainly not here to tell you who's right or who's wrong. I mean, I don't, you know, th there's a lot of people out there who's saying, oh, this person is right. This was, this was wrong. This is right. And, and, but that's that, you know, I just don't feel like that is my part. My part is in, in trying to, empower you so that you can decide and you can choose what's right and what's wrong for you, what resonates with you, what resonates in your heart. Yeah. And even if it's a good path, even if it's a path, you know, that's, that's like, that, that's good, but it might not resonate in your heart. So yeah. it might not that you take, it, might, it just might mean that you have to, to go another one, but it doesn't make the, the one that you rejected bad. It just right. means that they're for, for someone else, but it Different. just might not be for you. But that's where your own intuition, it's like you have to ignite your own instinct. Yeah. You have to turn on your, what Clarissa Pincola Estes calls your skull light. Your skull light is the light that sees clearly. It sees things as they really are. Once you take off the rose colored glasses, even that, you know, spiritual people love to put on rose colored glasses. You take off the rose colored glasses and, you know, you're willing to look at the, the whole thing, you turn that on, then you can truly make the, the decision on what's going to be your, you know, your right path. Exactly. What feels true to you. There's a saying, and I can't remember what teacher said this, but it's basically like if you, if you go out into the forest, you have all these different trees, different types of trees, but they're all reaching towards the same light. Mm-hmm. So yeah, absolutely. Right. And it's okay for your opinion to change. Catherine Edwards and I've talked about this a lot. It's okay for you to have a change of heart when more information or if you've learned a new lesson or, or you've learned a new experience. And so it changes your perception on things. That's called the human evolution. And that's why we're freaking here, you know, is to experience all these different perceptions so that we can find out more about ourselves too. So this is, I'm going to, Cindy, I'm going to, on, on the episode right now, I'm going to ask you, we're almost finished with this Magdalene book. When we finish this Magdalene book, would you want to do an episode with me and my friend, Stephanie, who's also investigating this on the um, priestesshood of Isis? Oh, yeah, I would love to. Because I mean, like, uh, when, when I talk about like my tribe of celestials beings, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big one. I mean, it's, I can just feel them. I can feel them. I can feel their power. I can, like, I can feel their feel their essence, their magic, and just like how powerful they really are. So and yeah. Poor Isis and Osiris. I feel so sorry. They have been so just run through the mud. They've had their whole identity shifted and changed mm -hmm. by nefarious people. Well, it was the Isis and Osiris that created Horus, mm -hmm. which Horus is the immaculate child. It is the new age. It's yeah. this, this, this is what we're, what we're talking about right now. It and I know it's, I know it's going to ruffle feathers when they hear that Yahshua and Mary grew up in this lineage, but of course they did. Of course they did. And it's, it's just because somebody's told you the story went one way doesn't mean that that's actually how the story went. And mm -hmm. I just, I just wonder if Osiris knows that there's literally statues of his, his penis all around the world right now. Like, I wonder how he feels about that. Like, I don't know. Like, how would you feel about that? It's it's like, okay. Yeah, that's odd. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> of course, a man would be like, "Yeah, that's mine." <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. He's like, "Yeah, that's mine." So, anyway, all right. Well, now let's go now for the, our remaining. Now we're going to talk about the moon. We're going to flip over into the moon. So that was so exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait to text Stephanie and be like, "We're going to do an episode on the priestess of Isis or Isis when we're done with the Magdalene book." But what do you have to tell us about the? Now I'm going to say before we get started, guys. So before anybody leaves comments, yes, I understand that the moon we see might not be our real moon. We totally understand that. We know there's a lot of conspiracy around that, but I have not been up there and I don't think Cindy has been up there either. So we don't know for sure, but we're just going to talk about the power of the moon in general, which is Gabriel, right? Isn't it Archangel Gabriel is the moon? Yeah. Yes. Gabriel. Sometimes I get Gabriel, Raphael mix of it, but yeah, it's Gabriel. Um, 
Yes, and I'm going to give you some a little point of view from the Hellenistic astrology. Because you know, today I'm studying the Hellenistic. I'm not. I'm not really an astrologer. I understand the essence and stuff of planets, but this, you know, talk about shifting perspective uh, or understanding more when you take classes. But I'm taking this course on the Hellenistic astrology, and Hellenistic is old. It's like the uh, from Babylonian time. So it doesn't necessarily follow some of this. I mean, it will to a certain degree, contemporary astrology, but you know, it goes, it goes way back. And uh, the, uh, according to Hellenistic astrology, the moon represents matter, just like how we were talking about spirit and matter, like the sun represents spirit and uh, the moon represents matter. And so then the, the moon represents everything that's of like this, this kind of realm and would also be considered like the feminine, the Shakti realm. It consists of your body, of course. And so even if you look at your chart, the moon placement on your chart will very often determine the, how your body is made, like, you know, the strengths of your body and things like that. So the moon represents the body and it, it re represents your emotions. I think most people probably understand the moon is that. Mm -hmm. It's more like this, you know, the, the, the realm of just the subterranean realm of the emotions and the body and then everything that has to do with the physical realm. That is the, the realm of, of the moon, according to the, the Hellenistic astrology. And then when we look at the moon, the way that it, it and, and one of the reasons too, that it's, it's such, um, it's considered the realm of matter. It's because she changes so much mm -hmm. like the sun is in the sky and it has its pattern. It goes from east to west. And I mean, it's, there's a certain consistency to the sun, the movement of the sun that connects it with, with spirit where the moon, you look at the phases and it's always changing. It's a different phase every single day. And oh, yeah. that's, what, that's what matter is. That's what this, this realm, matter is always changing. Matter is always, always moving. And then we know when the moon changes as, the, um, as it changes through its phases, it pulls on our internal waters. And it, I mean, it pulls on all waters. We know that moon influences the tide, right? We know that the moon pulls the tides of the ocean back and front. And, and so it pulls on our waters. And this is like one of the things I think where some of the conspiracy theory comes in where they, they, they think that the moon is bad, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, the moon is up there to cause all this confusion and cause all this pain and all that stuff because of the way it attacks our emotions. Yeah. And I mean, um, I'm sure, I mean, that's a point of view for sure, but um nonetheless, we have emotions, you know, like our, our, our emotions are there, you know, talking about having a human experience, it's going to come with those, those ebbs and flows of emotions, right? So anyways, you know, like the different phases of the moon pulls on your internal waters. And so um, it, it has, it, it, you know, it certainly has an effect on your mood versus like, you know, full moon, where it really pulls on people's waters and then like new and, and then some people it might be, you know, it might be different. So anyways, just through the way it moves through the sky, it affects it, it. It not only deals with our emotions, but it actually affects our emotions. It pulls on our emotions. And we also know that the moon doesn't have its own light. It reflects light from the sun. And then some people say, oh, well, that's nefarious because the moon doesn't have its own light. But by nature, like even if you think of spirit versus matter, I mean, matter is just it's a reflection, right? Yeah. It's a mirror. It's a reflection of the light. And so same moon, the moon is a mirror. It's a reflection of light. And the moon was of greatly respected by our ancestors. That's where we get the word month from is the moon cycle. Monday is the day of the moon. Women, we we follow yes. a moon cycle, the eponic downward moon cycle with your monthly cycles. Um, and, and they kind of, you know, I know that from what I understand during like you know, for electricity, they would do like during the full moon, they would be able to have night markets because people could see. Whereas in new moon, when the moon is dark, there's not any light in the sky. And so there's no, there's no, no way to see. 
And you do have, for me, especially I have, now I'm a full mooner. Like that's when my cycle comes. Usually women, you, sorry, men who are watching, I forget sometimes in yoga, all we, we talk about periods all the time. So the yoga men are used to it, but sorry for the men who are watching, but women usually it's usually around the new moon or the full moon that you'll find your cycle. And, um, and again, that's where we get the month from. And so the, our ancestors, and I know, cause my mom's family is from the coast of South Carolina and you respect nature. Like when there's that high tide, when the, especially when the moon is affecting that water and the ocean, like there is a respect for nature that you're not going to be able to defeat this. So therefore you have to prepare because mother nature is going to do her thing. And we are on a, you know, you look at the sun and the moon and the different polarities of both. That's the point of being in a third density planet is to have these two polarities is to have the shadow side is to have the opposing the apana to the prana, the darkness to the light, to be able to live in this, in this polarity to again, learn what you're not. So, well, yeah, the sun is the daytime luminary and the moon is the nighttime luminary. But they are the luminary, like like it, the luminary, the diurnal sect. You know, the di the daytime sect. The, is, uh, the sun rules that, and the, the moon rules. She is the luminary for the nocturnal. You know, for the nocturnal sect. Yeah. But she is definitely considered uh, a luminary, like the ancient people. You know, definitely, it wasn't just because she reflected the light didn't make her any less. That would be like saying, and this is an argument you hear even in yoga often, like, okay, so, uh, you know, we talk about matter in this human experience and how maybe some old, old, old traditions of yoga say, oh, no, human experience is bad. We need to transcend it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's bad. And it, it's, you can have the same kind of argument too, even like the people who think that the moon is like a conspiracy, it's a bad thing mm -hmm. because it doesn't represent like pure light, but it's like, it just kind of holds the, the, like you just said, the, the opposition and it holds our, our, our matter, holds our body. It holds our, you know, very much a, a part of this human experience and, and the, the moon, it, it like, projects out this light and creates a grid around the earth that helps to protect the earth. Um, this is according to the uh, Hellenistic astrology. Now I know that there's other uh, ideas that wouldn't say this, but it actually helps to protect the earth and she decides what is allowed into the earth. Interesting. That kind of goes back to then like the firmament that's so talk, spoken about in like the Bible, that there's like a, a grid over the earth there's like um i mean i blew my mind the other day i was talking to Catherine and some other people and i was like y'all if there's a firmament what if the sky really isn't blue what if that's just the freaking firmament <laughs> what if the sky's really like purple like what's gonna happen once that firmament but that's interesting because that does kind of correlate with some of these older um teachings you know mm -hmm. and you know how we talked about how the the relationship that you had with your father and the son were correlated. It's the same with the moon and the mother. The way that you nourish yourself um, is largely determined by the relationship that you had with your mother. Interesting. That's very yeah. interesting for thought for people. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, well, anyways, that's some of that, that's some of the old, old to traditional. But I was, you know, but I tend to respect some of the old, old stuff, you know, like things from back in the day, back from the Babylonian times where, you know, people were just looking up at the sky and, you know, the true astrologers, the true magicians. And yeah, and the, the phases of the moon also very much matter with magic. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think we know this already. Yeah, and yeah. When I was talking about when there's there's certain magic to be done, like for banishing, you know, if you're doing a banishing, there's probably a, you have to feel out. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, yeah, it's like, OK, it, because, you know, some it might be more neutral, but you also don't want to try to do it during a time where it's just going to agitate things and make things worse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because in the Ashtanga lineage that um, Cindy knows this and the, I signed a contract with KPJY that I would not teach on moon days. And so there's two moon days 
a month, we recognize new moon and full moon. Um, and so, but I've actually started because, because we respect the moon and especially full moon, full moons. Like, I feel like that's the one where there is more quote unquote danger in the practice because it, the, what it does to your thoughts, but because that's become such a huge part of my life through Ashtanga yoga, I now study each moon cycle we have each month. I go and study like, what is this moon cycle? What are the energies associated with it? What, like the last full moon we had was in Leo, which was very interesting to me because that's, that's Lyran, um, which is the Christ consciousness, uh, collect, uh, um, planet of Christ consciousness, um, is the Lyran, the house of Judah, the house, of the lion. So it's like, that's interesting. And so seeing like what's happened since then in, in our sun also, moon, sun also uh, rules Leo and sun mm -hmm. is that light. It's that Christ. So sun is the ruler of Leo, which is, yeah. So fascinating. Like how it's, it, it makes me like, like how in some ways we've gotten really advanced in our technology, which some would argue in Atlantis, we were more advanced, but we don't, you know, unless mm -hmm. you fully remember, we don't really know, but yet we've been dumbed down so much too, to not understand like how powerful nature is. I mean, even like the, you know, here's some selenite, like it, it's, it's a rock that charges and knowing that, that these, these rocks hold, like they hold uh, energy and power. And this is what Atlantis gridded themselves off of was rocks you know, the crystalline mm -hmm. grid to like grid up, up our world and give us um, the energy through, through nature. And we know that the sun also, like, I know the Cassiopeians say, um, charge your, if you put your, your rocks outside for the moon to charge them, it needs to be new moon, even though, cause it's, even though it's darker, it's a better charging for the rocks than full moon because of the amount of energy. And so all these off world or forums know this stuff because this is like, probably second nature to them. Whereas we've been completely, I've got my big, big amethyst here and my big ward off people here. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> my desk looks, looks a little witchy now, which is awesome. But <laughs> so yeah, well, I was, yeah uh, my whole house, my whole living room, it's nothing but what it is. It's just a big altar. Yeah. I love it, it is. It's like, my whole house actually is just, it's a lit. You just walk in. It's a walking in altar sacred i have altars everywhere. everywhere i have one for this for the nature beings i have one right now i have one set up for mercury because i'm working with mercury i have a, a venus aphrodite or aphrodite set up in my room that's Those a great active have ones. So i have like three yeah exactly so i have three more active altars going i had one set up for saturn for a little while but there's always some kind of something going on and i would highly recommend it <laughs> yeah I mean, it, I mean, it keeps your house charged. Yeah. It keeps it safe. It keeps it protected. When you have the element, when you're working with the elementals of earth, it, you know, it, you have the elementals, you have the trees, you have everything that's, that's just your, it, it keeps you like where you need to be, you know, it keeps you, it, again, it keeps you safe. And these are, I mean, yeah. I mean, who created this? Like if we get, you know, we, we talk about like the fundamentalists having issues with this, but God created this. This is oh, yeah. source, you know, again, mm -hmm. sorcery is pharmakia. This, I mean, amethyst, this is my birthstone, but it's also, this is what helps with like depression and sad. It's, it's a beautiful one too. I love that one. Ooh, that look at how too. rich and deep that color is. So pretty. Yeah. yeah. That was magical for sure. I love that. I know. I just Pretty. got this one. And then, uh, you know, this is a tourmaline for to ward off bad energies. Mm -hmm. I also have a tourmaline necklace I wear, but I charge them. I have a big selenite stick here that I've had for a long time. It's like my selenite wand that I um, charge my rocks with sometimes too. And the things that you wear too, that's, you know, when you go into like uh, talismans and amulets, mm -hmm. talismans are things that bring things towards you and amulets are things that push things away so that you can wear your neck necklaces and bracelets if you're, you know, as the amulets to help keep things. Family. Yes. I got rose quartz mm -hmm. here and rose quartz is for healing. I actually had a healing um, session done with my friend, Mary. And she, and I know I've had issues. I mean, you know, this uh, Cindy, I've had issues with my, my womb, my uterus for a while now. And she actually was instructed to put in like a, a pink, like almost rose quartzy type of stone, 
energetically, not a real stone, like into my uterus yeah. to heal it. So I've been wearing the rose quartz here. I've got rose quartz. Actually, I have, I got this rose quartz from you, Cindy. I got two of them. I have one here that I keep on my desk. And then I have a rose quartz I keep in my, um, in my purse as well, along with some tour tourmaline I keep in my purse too, just to, to carry it with me. Um, wherever I go. And, um, and yeah, I mean, God created this. I mean, these are the pyramids that, you know, as well, they have the, the rocks inside of them. And, um, you know, it keeps it's, it's just it's, it's amazing. It's, it's so, you know, human beings. We, yeah, we can say like, Oh, Earth is awful. It's terrible. But like, how cool is it that we have these, you know, these awesome, beautiful, cool, mm -hmm. little magical, living beings that, um, that give off energy just like we do. And, and information. Um, yeah, information. some of the crystals, yeah, especially the quartz, as are said to hold the information from previous, like Atlantean information, Lemurian information. Mm -hmm. They're stored within some of the, you know, the crystals that yeah. are embedded in the earth. They embedded them with the information, with the downloads, with the codes and everything. So and of course I got my sage and my dragon's blood for protection. You told a funny story one morning about sage where you were out with some friends and they came. Oh my gosh. That was, that was so funny. It was a surreal. Ex I came in to the yoga class cause I was still, I don't know. It was like my world's collided. Usually my, my spiritual world, you know, and I have my house set up and I don't have a whole ton of people coming in and out of my house. So I have like, snake skins and you know kite like all sorts of things so i actually have a snake you know we actually have a serpent so you know i i have snake skins and i use them to do burnings and when we're letting go of something like shedding, shedding. and all that yeah. so no crazy ass stuff in my house <laughs> i have like books you know about spells and all this stuff and and uh uh so, but we had some friends come over and, and friends who, I mean, they kind of know that I do this kind of stuff. And I think they were always curious about it, but they're not really that into it. But anyways, they all came over and they were singing um, karaoke at the top of their lungs. Okay. Like I'm talking like journey. I think they were singing journey. <laughs> Don't stop. Of course. Of course. No, of course. This, so this journey song was going on at it you know like probably the neighbors could hear it and there was like half of the the people that were there that were singing that and then like this other half were, were, were telling me all about like oh my gosh you know I have like I'm having like these issues these you know with my dad and all this stuff and I'm like what in the heck is going on this is so weird because you know I have the journey blaring and people expressing like all this stuff and then suddenly they're like Stage me, like do something, Cindy. Do something, Cindy's like, what do you want me to do? I was like, do you, uh, so I, I brought out my. It's actually Yeba Santa, and so I'm like, some people in the middle of this karaoke thing, and I'm like, this is so bizarre. And then they were like, stage me again. You gotta stage me three times. Do it three <laughs> times. I'm like, okay. Dan started opening up the windows. He, was like, he starts opening up the doors, and the other guys were just sitting there in karaoke. And I felt like I was in the twilight zone. I was like, "Oh my god, my world's just collided." So, it anyways, was so you was, came in. I was laughing so hard when you were telling me that. You're like, "I'm so tired." I was literally saging the neighborhood last night. I was like, "What?" I mean, we live, y'all. We live in like the Bible Belt. Like, I'm in the middle of Atlanta, and it's a little. It's okay in the middle of Atlanta, but you're in the burbs, you know. And so it is like it's the Bible Belt, you know. So, so it's uh yeah. that was hysterical. You walked in that morning. And you've been saging people all night. <laughs> just I'm awesome. like, the heck? I was like, you know, I mean, I'm used to the saging, but not like, anyways, it was just very so, bizarre. Well, just he, very, I felt like I was in the Twilight Zone episode. Like, what just happened? Well, like, Journey's playing in the background. Completely collided, <laughs> and I never thought that they would that way. You know, like, karaoke you know, and saging. Yeah, do you know that? Karaoke. That should be a thing. We should make it an event. Karaoke and, and saging, like like welcome to 2022. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. I think God has a sense of humor, so I'm sure the spirits yeah. are getting a kick out of that. That you know, don't stop yeah. believing is playing in the background yeah. while uh, while women are getting saged <laughs> in a kitchen. You know, like 
<laughs> so, I always I always laugh about like if we have to write new gospels of the Bible, it'll be like, what happened was <laughs> you see what happened was yeah. <laughs> this weird thing happened and you know just would not be as eloquent as we see other other writings. But um but so y'all, I know I don't want to keep you too long, Cindy. We're at about an hour now, but y'all, if you want to be saged by Cindy, I'm sure she wouldn't mind if you play Journey in the background. <laughs> All right, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you dance. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like yeah, Journey. Clearing. Listen, I have seen Journey in concert. It was with another guy as a lead singer. I went with my parents to see Journey in concert. I've actually oh, seen right it. I've seen Sticks with my parents, the Monkees with my parents before the lead singer passed away. I've seen a Ted Nugent, Ario Speedwagon, all with my parents. So that's oh, awesome. You had some cool parents, man. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think by the time I went to the concert with them, it was about that time I was like, let's leave a little early so we can beat the traffic. <laughs> you know, yeah. not like when you're in your twenties and you're there till the end. It was like, we're all like, okay, we're going to leave the last song so we can get out before the yeah, traffic. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. This was so much fun. And I can't wait after we get off, I'm going to text Stephanie and be like, we're going to be down for an ISIS episode to really go into the priestesshood of ISIS. Um, so we can hopefully start to get people thinking. I mean, one of my favorite quotes is a quote by Aristotle and it's a, it's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. And that's all we're learning in this new age is just being able to entertain ideas. It doesn't mean you have to accept them right away or at all, just entertain them, you know? Yeah. So you can use your instinct. Absolutely. Use your intuition. That's what we need right now. Yeah, for That's sure. what's gonna get you through, like yeah. without getting manipulated. Yeah, because I mean, talk about you know this idea of of being easily manipulated, and the reason is because our instincts and our intuition were shut off. So now, like, open that up. Own and your power. You know, tell who's who's truth? What's lying? Where are you being deceived? Or maybe you know people are not intentionally trying to deceive you but maybe they're the, the people who are passing on information they're just confused themselves yeah. i mean they don't know either it's not like they're they're intentionally being giving the you know but they just don't even know themselves and so yeah like yeah yeah I mean, trust yourself what trust is yourself Ram, what is ram Dahl say my favorite quote ever we're all just walking each other home and that's literally yeah. in our confusion we're all going to be stumbling together trying to figure it out but yeah own your power like you, you have that intuition you have, and that is what's going to get us into this new timeline is more able to stand in our own sovereignty. Um, and that, and that comes through looking into things and feeling how you feel about it. So once again, guys, um, I'm going to put all the links to, um, Cindy's resources, her YouTube channel, um, as well as her website, as well as her, um, email address. If you want to get in contact with Cindy, if you feel like she can help you on your journey, Cindy is amazing. Again, I've known Cindy for a long time, long before YouTube, um, newer real life before YouTube even came around. And um, she's an incredible healer. She's an incredible teacher. So, and an incredible friend. So go ahead and check out all those links down below guys. And please subscribe to her channel. She's almost at a thousand subs. So let's get her there because once you hit that a thousand mark, that's when things really change for your channel. And so we want to get Cindy there. So, all right, Cindy. So anything else, any parting words you want to say for our friends watching right now? Hey, don't stop believing. I'm on a journey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that was easy, but I just no, couldn't help I it. Love it. The next concert I go to, we should go to Journey together and bring our sage instead of a lighter. Just, just, just. just. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> we God. Really there was freaks. So so They're like, who the heck or where did they came from? <laughs> We're here, man. We're here, man. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, guys, I'll also put some links down to Ram Dass down in the description box below because I know we started off with Ram Dass. Also, one of my favorite quotes from Ram Dass was, hey, man, treat everybody like they're God dressed in drag. Yes. <laughs> so that. make sure you're treating everybody like they're God dressed in drag. So, all right, guys, well, we love you and we will talk to you soon. Bye.